Hello, and welcome back to Sharing a Chapter a Day. This is Do, Ra, Mi, and today I will be reading Chapter 145 of Engagement in Peril by Dara Ado Suk. Chapter 145 is titled, One More Day Stay in Belgium. Bozingen, Belgium, November 21 to November 22 of 2007. Two hours train venture back to Brussels, Belgium, from Paris, France, went smoothly. Our two hour train venture back to Brussels, Belgium, from Paris, France, went smoothly. The lad and I were pretty tired from our last three days of fooling around and stay in Paris. We were happy with what we had done and what we had seen. I love being with Delilah. I have been quite happy since she had come into my life, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and I hope this will never end. We didn't bother fooling around around on the train this time. We simply held hand and made out while snuggling in Gilles' arm for the rest of the ride. We arrived to Brussels about that afternoon around 1600. Once we got our luggage in, in order, we exited the train and made our way toward the front entrance. I found a payphone and gave my uncle another call, collect call to let him know that we have arrived. We waited for about an hour, about half an hour or so, for my uncle to come pick us up. In the meantime, we got some sweet ice cream coffee from the train terminal cafe, sipping and just simply enjoying each other's company. Since we had made a slight change to our plan of leaving Paris to London, we stayed the night at the Busigin in my uncle's home, and the next morning we left from Brussels and headed for London, England, instead to finish off our fun, instead to finish our fun, festive, sexually charged European trip during that November of 2007. My uncle arrived in his mini Mercedes SUV with two of his younger sons. We boarded their vehicle with our luggage and then, before going back to his home, my uncle decided to give us a little tour of Brussels. He took us to see the famous, the famous peeing statue called Mannequin Peace in the center of a nice tourist spot where malls and shopping areas were all about. And amused, and amused from the sight of the little boy peeing into the fountain, Delilah once again enjoyed herself with shopping for knickknacks and souvenirs and gifts for her mom and her friends back in Southern California. I made some small purchases too, like Belgian chocolate where I would share with my best friend and confidant Dara back in Cherry Pineapple Grove. I got my uncle's son some sweets and dessert too while we were uh, walking about, touring the whatever we saw in, the, in front of us. I asked my uncle what his wife would like. He's, he said not to worry. I got some her I got her some Belgian chocolate as well. We continued to walk about and taking pictures of each other, buildings and attraction. We also went to a spot where supposedly Jesus had laid his head and body to rest. So we as a tourist copy just copy other tourist action and rub the bronze statue of Jesus lying for good luck. My uncle laughed while he took pictures of a fullery act with the statue. After a good hour or so we returned to his car, boarded and drove us to several more attractions. He had taken and driven us up to the un adamanium, adamanium of which represent a nice atom molecule. People were all able to tour the museum there, and during the summer months in Belgium, the sphere is con converted into a death ride of sort of for family fun, mostly in a family-oriented park of fun and games filled with arcades and theater all about, like a fair. We climbed to the top, and then we took several pictures there, posing in front of it. After we drove around the grand place, we saw the town hall, Hotel de Ville, and visited the royal palace, Palais de Royal. It was a nice place too, nicely designed and built. Took some picture of it too. After the palace, we visited the Gallery of Saint Hubert, where it was situated in the center of town. There was a glass ceiling above, lined with cafe, theaters, and luxury store to wine and dine and shop. After our fun traveling around and looking at sight, whatnot, around the Brussels area, we then took a ate a bit and then returned home toward Buzujin. Before taking us directly home, my uncle made another short stop at his adopted parent home, where they were all medical personnel by trade. His father, his foster father was a medical doctor who runs his medical clinic from his own home. Many doctors in Europe ran their medical clinic out of their own home to save costs and expenses. He was a good doctor, charging his patient and client very little. He was a giving man. He also looked took a look at Delilah, medical, gave her a medical exam because she had a sore throat and listening to her lung for an irregular after. I'm sure her sore throat, 
I'm sure she got that sore throat from my dick being inside her mouth so many times and thrusting it so hard. After the examination, he gave and prescribed her some free pill for her, for her aches and pain. So she had said. What I hadn't known then that in the meantime, what I hadn't known then at that time, Delilah had also given something viral to me. She had infected me with, M with MRSA, MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. She, Delilah had given me MRSA there, a type of staph infection that is resistant to basic antibiotic and such, and can take a toll on one's body, as you will re as you will read later on when Delilah gave and infected me with boils and abscess once we returned to the States and back to her home in Southern California. Yes, the girl that I loved and thought who was true had given me abscesses and boils. My uncle's foster mother was a physical therapist by trade who was a delightful woman. She gave Delilah and I several boxes of Belgian dark chocolate and light chocolate to take back with us to when we ventured back to the state. The lovely medical European couple was quite interested about my story of my past and my situation of being lost for so long and how my aunt and uncle found me. They have heard of my story about me losing my mother Kushina at birth and how I was adopted and taken to the U.S. by the good captain and how I have traveled from various foster care and state agency and how I was a veteran of the United States military and how I joined in the Navy and what, what I did with the U.S. Armed Services, Special Forces and such with the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps back in my heyday and youth. They suggested I write a book about it. So here I am. My uncle's stepsister is also a medical doctor like her father. Since she is much younger and adventurous, she traveled and helped South American country children, going from country to country, treating in the sick and injured. She is one of those doctors without borders. She was quite cute then with the, when they showed us picture of her. His, his stepbrother is also, is also in the medical field. He worked as an EMT for the Swiss Ski Patrol in Switzerland. Wow, a whole family of medical personnel. I wonder why my uncle didn't become a medical doctor himself. Maybe it was just, maybe it was, it just wasn't for him. While there, we all had a good change of conversation and, and background, and we drank hot chocolate cocoa and just shoot the breeze and bris that, that bris afternoon in Belzigen, Belgium. I enjoyed talking to the good doctor and his wife. Their English were well spoken, with some slight Flemish accent. They showed us around their humble home, medical facility, and ground. They spoke fondly of my uncle and his upbringing and how they came to adopt him as one of their, of their three kids. After a good hour or so with the good doctor and his therapist's wife, we thanked them for the, their warm hospitality and gifts and left them for the night. I hope to meet them again one day in the future. I would love to meet all the people that have come to know him once again in the future. In God's name I pray. We got back to my uncle's home and around 2100 that evening, we thanked my uncle for picking us up for, from the stage station and showing, showing us around town and allowing us to meet his foster parents. Once in the house and up in the, our room, Delilah and I unpacked, sorted and organized our things and out of the luggage and ba backpack. We then cleaned up and went to bed without having dirty sex that night. We were both once again pooped out and exhausted from today's outing and events. We saw and did quite a lot around Brussels since returning from Paris, France. We snuggled in each other's arm and fell fast asleep. I hope we were having sweet dreams, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to breathe and be near Delilah. I love her dearly. After a good few hours of rest, we awoke the next morning. We took our morning shower separately, got dressed with our winter wears, uh, winter gears, and got our stuff ready for a trip back to London. Once we had packed and had hand out our luggage in, once we had packed and had our luggage in, put in my uncle's vehicle, Delilah and I returned to the house, thanked and hugged my uncle's kid and his wife, and said our farewell. Delilah and I also walked up to my grandfather's house to thank and say goodbye to him as well. We kissed and hugged warmly. With some tears in his eye, he instructed me to visit him once again once soon. I promised that I would, and we parted way that morning. With my uncle's assurance that I'd return, we left my grandparents' side and went out into the street to enter my uncle's already running car. My uncle drove us back to the train station. We talked and made comments about things. He told us that they was really glad to have met and known us. I borrowed a cell phone to call Jin and Chia to say thank and goodbye to them as well. They wished the, both of us good luck and fun for the rest of our time in London and to say hello to their mom and sister for them while we were there. We all laughed and wished each other well and then we hung up our phone right after. 
Once at the train station depot, my uncle walked Eli and I to our Eurostar train, and then we hugged and parted away. He gave me some warm wishes. We both thanked him and promised to return to visit. He handed me several pictures of him and his family, my grandfather, my cousin, and his foster parents. I really appreciated that. I hugged him warmly, and we both boarded the train and headed to our seats while we made our way, sure to look the both of us. Headed back to our seat while he made our sure to look the both of us onto and into the train. We waved goodbyes, and we walked back to his park as he walked back to his parked car outside the train depot. With some appreciation and happy thoughts of my visit, meet and greet with my cousins and uncle and gr grandfather, I was overcome and let out a little happy cry. Delia saw that I was in tears and had thought that something was wrong with me. She tried to console me, and I giggled from the gesture. I told her how I was feeling and how happy I had been with this experience. Then that we had kissed and hugged and, and wrote the real story treasure. I was telling how I was feeling happy I had been with this experience that I just had with my newfound family and then we kiss and hug and we rode the real sort of train from Brussels from Brussels Midi in Brussels from Belgium to London St. Pancras in London England my cousin Kagome had already been notified of our arrival to London she was told of the time and location when my uncle when my uncle had called his sister in London to let them know that our known of our return that day the train ride back to Eurostar was once again smooth and comfortable. Delilah and I sat in seat 77B and 78C in carriage 18. Delilah and I did our usual making out and doing crossword puzzle and sneaking off to full round. What not. We ate from the dining cart and ordered some beverages. We had a good ride and mostly stuck together like peas and carrots. We held hands throughout the whole ride and or an ordeal. An ordeal. When no one's looking, we pass a deep kiss and grab at each other's body parts. We would tease and pull at each other's provocatively throughout. We took several short naps and just held each other warmly. I think we were both so muchly, so much deeply in love. So I had thought. I love it when Delilah is in a deep sleep against my shoulder, her warm caressing my body and puts me at ease. I simply love this girl, Lord. Thank you for what you have done and given me. I hope that this day, I hope that one day I can return the favor, Lord. I just hope this never ends. In God's name I pray. See how stupid Shinshin was then? He kept thanking the good Lord for all allowing him to be with Delilah. What the fuck? What an idiot. He was he was so stuck on her. He was so stuck on that bitch then. What an ignorant idiot. Sucks to be him. Sucks to be Shinshin then. I wish that God would have told Shinshin that then that Delilah was no good for him. I wish the Lord had told him that Delilah was a disease-infested bitch. I'm sure God must have been testing Shinshin then. And look where he is now, dead and no longer around. God damn it. Thank you for listening. This is the end of chapter 145. Be on the lookout for chapter 146, titled, The Rest of Our Great Britain trip. This is Do, Ra, me, and I'll see you later. Thank you.